Hey guys, what's up today? Uh, today we're going to be going over the Ultimate Cho Guide. Um, I've been playing Cho for about, I'd say, four years by now. I've, I've hit the rank 1 Cho NA before, I've hit rank 2 in the world, and I have just have thousands of thousands of games over... Um, over every season, basically, I'm just playing Cho'Gath, and so I've learned a lot, and I kind of just want to teach you guys a little bit of what I've learned about Cho, um, and just what some things you actually won't learn from other people as well. Um, for Cho Top, which is the, the thing I usually go, I'd say for 95% of my games, I go Resolve, Grasp, um, basically... What you want to go for your runes is the grasp, obviously, with the demolish, just because it works so well with his um, HP. Uh, this is actually kind of depends. I usually never go conditioning on Cho'Goth, just because I feel like the laning phase is so important with Cho. If you get behind in the laning phase, then it actually makes the game way harder. So I almost never go conditioning. I almost always go second wind, or unless you're like maybe, if you're against a Garen, if you're against a Darius, if you're against a Jax um, or a, a Riven, like people like that, then I would advise you on bone plating, uh, just because it gives you the like the survivability against their burst. But if you're against basically like any tank, a range stuff like that, then the second one is 100% the play, because it just scales so well with your basically just bonus HP that you get. So second wind, um, this. I almost always go overgrowth as well because this scales with your ult and so basically the more permanent health you have the the more your ult does so this is just really good for Cho goth in general like these I mean that's just not great uh, that's like that's all right so unfinishing would be like decent if they have a lot of um, CC but definitely advise the overgrowth the secondary is actually like definitely more complicated than it needs to be what i usually go is i usually go triumph tenacity just so it gives me the more tenacity then i can go like attack speed armor and health or armor armor or sometimes armor magic resist as well um i'll explain why i do this so the reason i would do this is because uh, if they have like if they're mostly ad then i would go this route um so I could have like a little bit of tenacity in there because I'm going to be building plated seal caps in the future. So I'll literally have no tenacity and this will be my only tenacity that I get. If I plan on actually building Merc Treads, then I actually won't go this route. I'll, I'll either go this route, um, the Alacrity and the Adaptive Force uh, because if I already have tenacity from Merc Treads, which I'm planning on getting, then... I won't have to have tenacity right here, so I can get attack speed. I won't have to have attack speed right there, so I can get this for the early trades. Or if you don't want, or if you don't feel like you need the adaptive force, and you can always get ability haste, and that'd be good too. Um, also, something I'd advise getting: if you already plan on getting merc treads, then magical footwear, and this is also really good to get on Cho'Goth, uh, just because you don't really buy boots on or i don't really buy boots um before like uh pretty early unless i'm like in a specific matchup where it's like maybe i do have to like teemo or something like a ranged matchup i probably wouldn't be getting this but i i usually like getting this when they have a whole bunch of ap that way i build mercs i get this magical footwear and get this so that way i can get this attack speed and then like get whatever like these two need basically um uh, yeah so that's basically it for the runes uh i would say if you were planning going like mid or if you are against a top um hail of blades is actually pretty decent with cheap shot and the eyeball collection and let's see i mean any of these are all right, but ultimate hunter is the main one just for your ultimate and then this would pair with the mana flow band and either gathering storms good scorch is good too um i personally like gathering storm but you can either you can basically just go out any of those 
Um, but this is what I would usually do for like a, if I was mid lane or something. That way, if I Q and knock them up, then I could hail blades them with my E really fast. It would also do true damage and the takedowns would get my reduction on my ultimate and also like the adaptive force adaptive force either armor or MR or even health would be good if they're scaling and it's a pretty easy matchup the last thing that I'd advise going is if you're against like a like a ranged top lane or something um, and you really don't think that Halo Blades is to play then I'd advise going Arcane Comet Manflow Band, of course. Transcend, Transcend, it's always good, but it's not like the best. I mean, all of these aren't really great, but Transcendence is the best one. I mean, absolute focus is kind of rough because you're not going to be above 70% HP, basically. So, um, and then after that, Gathering Storm or Scorch, whichever one you prefer. I like Gathering Storm because it just gives me more scaling. This is kind of up to you. But personally, I like Resolve for the tankiness, just so I can get second wind in this matchup. Honestly, when you're against a range top laner, I would not go Demolish, just because... Um, really what happens is in a ranged matchup, you really can't hit their tower at all. So this Demolish is going to go to waste, and you can... This second wind is going to be so useful with the Doran shield, obviously. And, and Overgrowth as well. Um... I would advise pairing this with Dorn Shield if you're top, but the Hail of Blades that I said earlier, that one, with this, I would advise, if you're mid if, and you go this, and I'd advise getting like a Dorn's Ring or something with two healing pots. And with uh, Grasp with this, um, I'd advise going Dorn's Shields. Um, basically 100% of the time just because it scales so well with your second wind and it really gives you the sustain you need in your lane. Now that we've actually finished the runes for basically every scenario, let's move on to the items because the items are like basically one of the mo most important parts of Ford Cho. Okay. So... I guess we'll create a new set. <sighs> when you're top Cho'Gath, you either want Jack Show. Let's see. Oh, you got it. Okay. You either want Jack Show or you want Heart Steel. Um, basically, these two are really good. Other mythics for Cho, I rarely get, basically. Like, maybe a super rare scenario I would get, honestly, Divine. But that's, like, super rare. I That, like, would have to be the, the rarest thing in the world. Or, like, Iceborne or something. But that's also pretty rare as well. Um, I'd advise Jack Show basically probably 70% of the time. Uh, just because it just scales so well with your each, each second in combat. Um, and you just, like, uh, basically you're going to be in combat, um, I'd say more than 8 seconds almost every single fight. So this is really good just for that, because uh, you don't really die easily. So if you don't know which mythic to get, I'd advise the Jack Show. This is very situational. The reason you would want Heart Seal if um, if you are against a a tank that you think is also building Heart Seal, um, if you're against like a, a Bruiser, um, the like uh, you think you could get like Heart Seal procs off easily. And, and pair that with a couple of melee other opponents as well. So let's say you were against like a Garen and, and you, and you, they had like a Sejuani jungle, like a Blitzcrank support and stuff like that. Maybe even like a Talon mid, then Heart Seal would be really good for that because you could easily proc your Heart Seal because they're all melee basically, except their ADC. Um... 
but if they had like a whole bunch of ranged and like maybe they had a garen top which is the only melee and like a kindred jungle and like a whole bunch of ranged people then hard seal would only be easy to proc on their garen and everyone else is ranged, it would be like, you could still proc it, but it just wouldn't be as easy. So therefore, hard seal would be worse. And then I'd advise going jack show. Um, so that's why I think going hard seal is like pretty rare. Uh, definitely going jack show most of the time is a play. Um, but after that, I'd advise, uh, let's see here. Actually, let's get two. Let's get two. Okay, so... Where is Sun? Okay, Sunfire. I guess I'll just look it up and take the L. Okay, so Sunfire is definitely going to be your close second for probably both of these. It is situational, of course, but this is just such a good item in Shogoth because it scales off your bonus HP. And that includes your ultimate. So the more ults you have and the more bonus HP you have from your items, the more this is going to do. So this is just such a good item for Cho, and it's pretty cheap. So I'd advise just going on both of them, unless your opponents are basically all AP, then I would not advise going with this. But I'll get into that uh, in a bit. Um, but yeah, you really want to go this into almost every scenario, because most of the time your lane opponents are gonna be um, AD, and if they are AP, then what you want to go is um, probably uh, either get like a Mercs or something if they have like a lot of AP, Mercs second, and then you want to go Sunfire, or or um, if if basically if your top laner is the only AP, then that's really awkward. That's honestly the worst spot that I that that I'm in. Um, or like that that you'll see yourself in because basically what'll happen is you'll go Jack Show, which is like all right, but then you'll be like, well, I need AP for my laner, but I also need AD because literally everyone else on their team is AD. So that th that's the most hated spot that I'm in sometimes, but it's pretty rare, so you don't have to worry about it that much. But if you are, then you kind of just got to take the L. Go Sunfire, and if if they have a lot of AP, then then go Mercs. But if they don't, don't take the L and go Mercs. Honestly, just go play the Sealer Caps at that point. Um, and then you'll have to after this, uh, depending on who they are, I would just build chains, stick it on them. Then you don't worry about having to build a Mar. You can just stick the chains on them. Then they shouldn't be uh, bothered you anymore, unless they're like super fed. But um, but yeah, that's my advice for the, just a single AP, um, if you're laning against. That will apply to, um, other lanes as well, basically. Like, if you're going against a, like, a AD top, AD jungle, AP mid, like an ADC and, like, a support who does, like, basically no damage, like a Braum, then this is what I would go. Jack Show played Seal of Caps. Um, Sunfire, and then chains for the mid, chains mid, then you won't ever have to worry about AP, a, a, getting MR again. Then you can get, after that, probably like a Randuins or something, depending on if they have crits. Um, I don't really like going Deadman's play that much. Um, honestly, after that, you could go Randuins. Wormog's armor is also very good on Shogoth, just because the bonus a, AP, or HP. And then just kind of stuff like that. Um, one controversial thing that I've seen a lot for people is going Frozen Heart, wherever that is. Frozen Heart. Um, oh, I'll talk about Thorn Mail in a bit. But going Frozen Heart. Uh, basically what I've seen is people are like, oh, it's so good because it gives you the, the passive, gives you a whole bunch of mana and stuff. But the thing is, I mean, the reason I don't really like Frozen Heart is because it literally gives you almost zero, actually gives you zero HP. So, I mean, yes, it's an alright tank item, but you really don't need the mana, so that's a waste. 
It gives you no HP. It gives you a good amount of armor and ability haste. And the passive's good, but there's just better items, I feel like. Um, this would be really situational. I would maybe buy this if they had like a bunch of like attacks. Be like Trend, Kindred, Kaelin, stuff like that. Then I could see it, but I'm not going to lie. I buy this like less than 1% of my games. I, like, rarely buy this item because I hate it so much. Um, but, yeah, so let's just put this item down here because that's a, I mean, meh item. But, yeah, um, after you go the chains on the single AP, get the Randwins, Warmogs, Thornmail is always good as well. Just basically things that give you health and armor if you need as well. One problem that you'll see happening is if you build, um, even if actually they don't have single AP, in regular games, you'll see a lot of ADCs be going match or armor pen, like a Lord Doms per se. I, I see that basically once every other game. Um, the counter to that is chains, basically. Now, let's say... Um, let's say you have like a, like a pretty balanced team, like let's say two AP, two AD and like, uh, and like a support like Brahm or something. Right. Um, in that scenario, I mean, obviously I'm not going to go over the mythic cause that kind of depends. We'll say Jack shows the mythic this game. Um, I mean, this also depends on, like, their CC or not. I would advise, if you have a Braum, they have, like, a couple other, like, people that do heavy, heavy CC, then maybe Mercs is the play, because they have 2 AD. But that really just doesn't depend on other damage either. But what I would go is, um, Sunfire. And then, uh, let's see here, Force of Nature after that. And then, uh, let's see here. Let's just get rid of all of these. Okay, so this is what you have right now, and they have 2 AD, 2 AP, so the thing is, you have a decent amount of armor and a mar, so you're kind of chilling right now, and you're like, and you see the ADC building LDR, and you're like, wow, that is the greatest thing I've seen in my life. Um, basically, what you do then is to counter the ADC, you just build chains, and you whack that on the ADC, and then they will do very little damage to you after that. Uh, unless you're like super fed and you're pretty behind. But yeah, this is like, this right here is the ultimate counter to Lord Doms because it doesn't take in the uh, the account of um, Magic Pen and it just does a flat 30% off of their attacks. And it gives them less tenacity, which is always a plus. Plus HP, um, Bonus HP to you, which is always needed. So yeah, very good item for Cho'Goth. I build a, a lot of the games I play on him, as you'll see in my ranked games. But after you build Athos Chains, um, I mean, kind of just business as usual. Let's say the APs like are kind of like they're kind of mid. Um, this Thornmail and this Jack Show will probably um, hold them off for the rest of the game. Just because Force of Nature is really got an item. So what I'd advise building then is like a Warmog's Armor after that as your last item. Just because it's such a good item on Cho'Goth because of the HP. Um, unless you're feeling like you need more MR, then maybe get like an Abyssal Mask or something. But Warmog's Armor as a last item, basically like 100% of the time. Let's say you have an Aatrox top. Um... Like a Kindred Jungle, a Syndra Mid, Caitlyn ADC, and let's just say like a Pike Support, right? Um, you have all those people. The Kindred and Caitlyn are building LDR, uh, mid to late game, because why wouldn't they? Because um, you're super tanky and all that. The Syndra is also building Void Staff, so that's not good as well. Um, I mean, the Aatrox is just building whatever. He's Bruiser, so he's like, meh. Um, 
in that scenario, what I'd advise building is obviously you got the jack show because they're basically all range except the AH rocks. You'd go play the seal caps because they're basically all AD. Sunfire because uh, they wouldn't have a LDR just yet. Um, and then after that, I would not build the force of nature. Screw that. I'd build the chains. I'd stick it on the Syndra. And then after that, you see that the Kindred and the Kalen are building LDR. So you're like, wait a second, my arm is not going to do anything now. So instead of War Mogs, after the chains, and you stick it on the Syndra, and so she's done with, basically. What you go is basically more armor. In this case, you would actually go Randuins. Um. You'd go Randuins to get their crit and, set and everything. And after Randuins, your last item would be Confirmed Thornmail. This would be your build setup in this order, basically. And you're thinking, wait a second. Why would you build more armor against Armor Pen? That sounds like the stupidest idea I've ever heard in my life. And then I'd reply, uh, because armor actually counters Armor Pen. And the reason that is, is because diminishing returns. Uh, the more armor you have, the less effective it is. But the thing is, if they buy armor pen, let's say you have 300 armor, basically. And they have, like, I mean, I, I'll just do a random number, 30% armor pen. Then you would have, I mean, I would say, like, 200 armor left from that 30% armor pen, unless I just did my math terribly wrong right there. Um, but yeah, you'd have 200 armor left. And instead of the 100 armor um, that you have stacked up on the 200 armor, getting like dementia turns, basically, um, now you just have 200 armor and it dementia turns less. So yes, you still take more damage, but the thing is, you have less dimension returns because of you have more armor. Let's say instead of just going straight um, armor, you're like, you know what? To counter armor pen, I'll just build more health. And so you built like maybe a war box or something. You built like maybe this or whatever, which gives you HP. I mean, um, then in that case you'd actually be more screwed because uh, you would have less armor to counter that. So let's say you would have like, I don't know, maybe like 200 armor or something. They'd get rid of 30% of that, which is 60. And then, so then you would have 140 armor, which is actually kind of bad because you basically have almost zero dimension returns after that. So... Um, yeah, basically, you'd have 140 armor, which is, like, not great, which is probably, like, a, I want to say, like, a 65% uh, reduced armor, but, yeah, that's not as great as if you had, um, 200 armor after, after the LDR, which would give you, like, way less armor, uh, take it back. Obviously, you'd still still take a decent bit of damage because LDR is LDR. It does work, but mathematically, if you build more armor versus armor pen, that is better from 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 what I've seen. Now that we've gone over basically every scenario from the tank side of things, honestly, I'm just gonna skim through this this mage kind of side of things just because. It's pretty sh straight cut. Um, what you want to go if you're mid lane is... Let's just get rid of these. Get rid of these. Rod of Ages. My favorite item from mid lane. Because it scales so well on Shogoth. Um, after that, Demonic Embrace. Because um, it also basically scales with his... Gain bonus health as AP. Like, that's so good. Um, after that... I mean, you could go a couple things. Gargoyle is, is one. Um, obviously, actually, before we go into that, uh, the boots. 
I would not advise going those sorcerer shoes. I'd advise either going. Oh, well, actually, that didn't work as well as I thought. Plated seal caps. I'd advise going either plated seal caps or mercs for these. Just because, I mean, you're tank still, so it's like, might as well. Uh, build those after you get rod. Rod ASAP, because it scales right as you build it, so. Um, and then after that, you could go gargoyles, or you could just start going um, straight tank as well. Like, Sunfire still wouldn't be terrible. It wouldn't be the best, but it wouldn't be terrible. Um, that's kind of like a meh item. And then also... Um, added on to that would be just like the, uh, let's see here, like War Mogs as well wouldn't be bad. I mean, it kind of depends. Like, this is actually a pretty good setup right here. You got the AP, you got the HP, you got played seal caps, and you have the armor and magic you need, plus the HP again. So, this is actually a pretty good thing for Cho'Goth mid to use. If you don't know what to use, this is always a really good idea. Just, it's all, almost never bad to, to build this. Um, so, this is what I'd advise to build if you're mid. Maybe if you're top sometimes, you could get away with building this if, that, if they have like a ranged top laner. Yeah, this is my advice for the AP side of things for Cho'Goth. Now that we've finally finished the items for Cho'Goth, let's get into leveling. Okay, so you've gotten into game, and you're wondering what to level up for your abilities, basically. What I found out, and this has actually taken me many years to figure out, um, just in general, I actually learned this a couple months ago, is when you're against like a tank bruiser, 90%, actually I'd say like 90 five to like 99% of the time you want to just level up B real quick if you're against a actually no no this is that percent is right but basically if you're against a Darius you want to level up Q if you're against a range you want to level up Q and if you're against basically someone you can't really get these first three minions from you would level up Q uh, just because you won't be able to like e trade with them, and basically you won't. The only way you'll be able to get the three CS is if you can actually queue the CS right here. But something you should know is don't die to get these three CS. A lot of like top planners, if they know like they can one v one you, they'll sack their first three CS just so you you can't even get the XP for the th first three CS. And uh, basically what I mean by that is we'll go over a little example here uh, Let's say like you're kind of chilling right here And like they come out right here and stuff out of the bush and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa I can't one view on you. What are you doing? Like they'll kind of like dance around here and you can't really get close to these CS because they're right here um, They're like not gonna hit their CS either So they're gonna still get the XP for these three CS But you literally can't because like you can't want to be one of them, so you'll be like right here. And then they'll finally back off once you see this next wave. And then they'll be like, okay, now I'll CS a little bit. And now you can kind of like CS with Q. I mean, I leveled up C, so it's kind of troll right here. But yeah, that's basically the something you want to watch out for. Is if you try to get those three CS uh, by like queuing or something, then they're going to get a nasty trade off. And then that's not going to be worth it overall. So yeah, definitely at some point you're going to have to like take the L and honestly just miss 3 XP of videos and then after that you'll like, it's going to be bad, but it's going to happen sometimes. So um, after, once you're level 2 in a regular matchup, I would advise leveling up the Q just for the, the E and then you can Q them on top. Oh, I mean, let's see here if I can. I mean, it just helps with the trading and stuff like that. Um, once you're level 3, definitely advise going E 3rd, just for the help trading and stuff like that. Uh, just because W, you literally won't be um, using at all. And E, it'll help with the cooldown reduction and the more damage as well. 
See, my E did so much damage to him after basically just one E. And my W, basically all it does early is just does like a little bit of damage and it wastes mana. Because it costs 70 mana just for one W. Um, at level 4, I'd actually advise to just go all in with that strategy. Um, basically, at level 4, just level up Q. Screw the W because you don't really need it early. And just level up Q. Now you have two E's, two Q's, and you can trade pretty well with that. See, that actually does a lot of damage. It didn't really show because he had the magic thing. But yeah, that actually does a lot of damage when it's leveled twice, uh, which is something to note. It increases by basically six each time. So, um, but yeah, let's see here. I'll stop doing it that way. Uh, let's see. After four, then you can finally level up the W just so you can have a silence if you need extra damage if you need to kill them. Stuff like that. I mean, obviously, six, you go the ult. Seven, go the E. Um, eight, go the E again. Nine, go the E again because you already leveled up Q. And then 10, Q, or 11, you would have actually done the R. Um, just stuff like that, you know? Basically, what I'd advise to do is level up W, wait to level it up as long as you can, because I honestly hate W. The only reason it's good is because the silence, but I really hate it because it really does no damage and it costs so much mana. It's basically not worth it. Um, but yeah, that's it for the leveling. The only... The only games that I would level up W third is is if you were trying to cheat a recall. Let's say you're like cheat a recalling and you're on the third wave and stuff and you've got like level three and you're like, oh shoot, shoot. If you level up E, then like it would be like map because you could still clear it, but it'd be harder. If you were like trying to get this third wave pushed out for cheater recalling, then actually I'm gonna toggle minions just to make it easier to explain. Um, then I'd advise to to level up W, just to help clear the wave W ones, E, Q, stuff like that. Get it in, recall, and then you could buy like a coal or something, go back, and then basically play as normal. That's the only scenario I would level up W third though, because any other scenario, W is kind of just useless, unless maybe it would help to, like, kill someone, but, like, base 100% of the time, double E, double Q is just going to be better, in my opinion, because it'll help with trading heavily. That, now that we've done the abilities, um, and I'm just going to go over some tips and tricks that I've learned with Cho'Goth, that'll help you guys in your gameplay as well. Um, I'd say one of the most important things for Cho'Goth is his stacks. Um, and obviously, I mean, the, w one of the most basic things with Cho'Goth is his ult. So you can only get six stacks from minions and non-epic monsters. So you kind of have to play around with that. What I'd advise to do is right as you hit six, um... If you feel like you could kill the next, the, your opponent, the next, like... 45 seconds then I would hold my ultimate and stuff like that but if, you, but if you're sh like CSing and stuff you're full HP they're full HP then I'd advise to just ultimate in right there to get it on cooldown they're gonna kind of try to take advantage of that but you're Cho'Goth so you can kind of like minimize it pretty well um, the thing is um, you really want to get your your six stacks um, you're, like, I'd say before, like, 25 minutes in the game, which is easy to do, um, but that's if you're, like, weaving your sacks in and out and stuff. Um, what I've, like, seen is, like, you probably get, like, um, a couple sacks and, like, you're like, oh, wait a second, I think I can kill him or something, or, or, your jungler's top and stuff, and you have, like, a stack, your cooldown's coming off or your ultimates coming off cooldown and stuff and you're like wait a second i would kind of want to save it because my jungler's top so he may gank he may do rift 
or it may be a 2v2 fight as well. And if you don't have a euro for a 2v2 fight, then you probably will lose the fight, I'm not gonna lie, just because you don't have your ult. So, so yeah, if, if your jungler's top and they're kind of like looking for something, then definitely save your ult, because in that case, uh, you probably will use your ult. Um, something, second thing I'd advise to do is just like, for the rift aerial itself, like if your jungler's just top side and your stack's coming up, then honestly, try to get push in, push the wave, and then ping, yo, um, rift and stuff, and then uh, nine times out of ten, they're gonna be like, oh, I should be down for rift. And then, so you kill the rift with them. Um, while you're like, while it's getting down there, ping and say, can I eat? Not in caps, but I shouldn't caps this time. And then they're gonna be like, um, yeah, sure, you can eat and stuff. And then, so you'll eat the rift and get a free stack off it. So, obviously, eat it when it's, like, actually gonna, like, give you a stack. Not what I should right there, but, um, but that's just, like, when they're not contesting. Let's say you're going for Rift, and the top laner's coming, the jungler's coming, and it honestly is a 50-50 for whoever, like, um, gets a Rift. I'd advise to, to ping the jungler smite a bunch of times, and say, smite it and stuff like that the reason you actually want to say that is because when it's a 50 50 um smite actually is instant and your ult takes a little bit to like proc and stuff and so that's why ult isn't guaranteed even though it does more damage than a smite it is it isn't guaranteed uh, because it takes a couple of seconds to like proc so that's why it's better to have two person trying to smite it than one person trying to smite it, um, which is your ult basically. So I'd advise when they're contesting the a rift or a dragon or a baron even, then tell them to smite it. And while you're trying to ult it as well, I mean, if you ult it, then that's a dub because you got an ult. But if you miss the ult and your jungler's planning on you ulting it and you miss the ult and they got the smite, then everyone's gonna be tilted at you and it's gonna be the L, the biggest L you've ever taken in your life. Probably, yeah, definitely the biggest. But if you tell them to smite it, then they're already looking for a smite. And if you ult it um, while they're looking for a smite, they're never going to get mad at you for eating it. Because you got the buff. Um, but yeah, that's my advice for like just objectives in general. Is if they're not contesting, um, ping, ping the thing. Be like, uh, can I eat and stuff? And they're going to be like, oh, sure, yeah, yeah, you can eat. But if they're contesting and it's honestly 50-50 if they're going to get it or not, then say, ping their smite 100 times or something. Be like, yo, smite it, smite it. And then they know they're going to watch out for the smite, basically. And you're going to watch out for your ults as well. So, like, it's kind of... This should very secure it. Like, very rarely does it get stolen after that. Um, uh, you've probably like heard about the the thing where it's like, oh, what if you just stack their ults on your uh, on on their smite and stuff? It's like that. I've I, I really like find that unreliable and stuff. Uh, actually, no, it's the most reliable thing you could do. But the only like reason you do that is if you are like maybe in, like actually in competitive queue, like. Uh, teamed up with like a, a jungler or something like duoed with a jungler and like a or in like a like in a 5v5 um, stuff like that but the reason I hate doing that is one it doesn't give me a stack because 100% of the time you you smite it and then they, or you eat it and then they smite it so like you eat it and then they smite it right after and then it dies um, and then you don't get the smite it basically just wastes your ult and a waste or, or it it gets a smite too, but you get the objective. But it's I just hate it because it wastes my ulti, so it's like meh. Um, that's basically the only reason why, because ultis are very important for Togoth, and I'm just greedy for them. So the more ultis you have, the bigger you are, and the like. I mean, the more fed you are, obviously, but. That's my advice for objectives. If you have any questions of that sort, let me know in the comments because this um, scenario is actually pretty confusing and it'll actually take a couple times to like get used to and stuff. So if you have any questions, be sure to shoot a comment 
Something you should note, though, is for Togoth, you're going to be weak-sided a lot of games, which is very annoying, but it's sadly true. Even if you ask for a gank, they're going to be like, WTF, you're Togoth. I'm going to weak side you, and I'm never going to gank you in my life. And I'm like, fair enough. Actually, that's the most unfair I've ever, uh, unfair thing I've ever heard in my life, but we can go with it. Um, yeah, don't be surprised if you, like, get weak-sided Hala. So, uh, in that scenario, you kind of just gotta, like, take the L and either just go even with your opponent or kill them or lose slightly, but don't lose heavily. Um, but yeah, basically, some tips and tricks in the laning phase for Cho'Goth is um, your E is definitely the the most important part of trading ever while you're just like let's see while you're just in lane uh one second i'm gonna pass forward 30 seconds uh just show this real quick but okay he's mid okay while you're just in lane and just like trading and stuff um like trade with your grasp up like i'm gonna i have grasp up right now i'm going to try to like e Ian, um, or auto and E him, and then I'm going to back up. Obviously, that wasn't the best trade, but that's just you, Wukong specific. I'll get into that a, a little bit later. But E, back up. I'm going to... I don't have my grass up, so I'm not going to, like, auto it and stuff. But here is actually not the worst spot because I can heal from my passive from killing these minions and stuff like that. Um, obviously, like, it's a little bit different since, like, it's a... It, it, like we're super high level and these minions are super under levels but yeah definitely just try to keep your grasp up at all times just for like a trade and stuff yeah auto e stuff like that with the grasp on my grasp up now i'll go in for another trade just stuff like that you know um just auto e and that's basically the the main thing that you're going to be doing for trading in um, in landing phase, occasionally you want, you'll want to like Q and stuff to just like, uh, Q and then E and all that, but that's just going to be a little bit occasional. Um, but yeah, uh, that's the main thing. Also right there, I'm planning on pushing wave and recalling. And now once I'm recalling, uh, my ult's going to be on CD and I'll just go over like what it's going to be like and stuff. But basically, I'm going back to lane. My ult's on CD. I also bought a couple of stuff, obviously, but I didn't for the scenario. But yeah, I'm going back to lane and everything. And let's see here. Once I get back to lane, honestly, this would be like better if it was top. But I, I guess we're just going mid for fun. But yeah, my ult's already 30 seconds down. So that's all, honestly really good. Now I just need to wait 20 seconds for my ult to come back up. And it's chill. So I'd advise once you're like about to push in a wave and you still have ulti up, then ult minion, ult like the last minion or something, and then recall, then the cooldown will be like way less and stuff. Now the cooldown is basically already up and I could like look for an ult trade with him or something, ult him. But I'd say that's like another like really important thing with Chogoth to, to note is just your ult timers and everything. Um, so I'd say the only thing I really have in mind to go over is, um, the, uh, the shields with Holtine. Um, the only thing that I'd advise to watch out for is Holtine while they have shields. If they have shield bow or like a, like a random shield or something, then what I'd advise to do is, if you like know they have a shield bow, while you're like killing them, then definitely proc that shield before, and then after you shield that, after you see that shield proc, then wait for it to go below the threshold, obviously, then ult them after. Because what's gonna happen, like a lot of times, is you're gonna be fighting someone, you're gonna ult them, you're gonna be like, yes, got an ult, and, and then they're not gonna die, and you're gonna be like, what the. You're gonna look at their items, they have a shield, but you're like, wow, that is the sweetest thing I've ever heard of in my life. And then, 
yeah, you're, you're basically going to have wasted your ult. And it's going to be really good for them. But if you, like, see that they have, like, a shield bow and, like, you're fighting them, you're like, okay, I'm going to wait till after their shield procs. So I'm going to get low enough. And then, boom, their shield procced. Okay, good to know. I'm going to still fight a little bit. And then, boom, ult them. And then you get the sack because their shield procced already. Um, but, yeah, that's actually... All I wanted to talk about right now for Togoth. Um, if I think of anything later, I'll be sure to like let you know um, in the comments. Or like, I actually might even do another one of these Togoth guides later in the future and stuff like that. Um, or like even like another Champions guide as well. Because I play like more than just Togoth, but Togoth is my main. So, but yeah. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned a lot. Um... If you have any questions, be free to let me know in the comments or something. And um, if you actually like want um, personal coaching, be free to let me know in the comments as well. I've actually done private coaching as well for Chogoths, and it's actually been pretty successful. Um, I've gotten like multiple people from like iron and bronze to gold and even platinum as well. So, so yeah, let me know in the, the comments below. Um, if you like have any questions or like if you like want any coaching as well um, but yeah um, yeah hope you enjoyed